Hi and welcome to the fifth part in this tutorial series. Last part we created a new coordinate system with the GLK matrix for make ortho function. And so basically if we run our app now we get a little red square in the bottom left corner. So in this video we will we will apply a texture to that square. So this is how Textures work in, in OpenGL. And yes, uh, so we will use a GLKit library. I'll just. That's fine. Okay, so uh, say here we have a square. I'll use this. So, so here's our square. And this has a, has a coordinate, this vertex, and this vertex, and this vertex. Now, uh, when you apply textures in OpenGL, you have to give something called a, a texture coordinate. Now, uh, texture coordinates range always from zero to to one. So, say we want uh, to bind a texture to the the corners of this square, then essentially this corner will have the coordinate zero zero. This one. Uh, will have one zero, this one will have zero one, and this one will have one one. Uh, I'll actually add this. So, yeah. So, say this corner has in, in the open shell coordinate system some coordinate, like for instance, just, uh, yeah, just something 50, 60. And this has then 160. This has 50, uh, 50, 110. And this one has, this one has then 100, 110. Well, and then the texture coordinates will be. 0, 0 for this corner. Well, actually, any corner could be 0, 0. But, um, well, 0, 0 is, is usually the, the bottom left of it, at the bottom left of the texture. So, if you, if, and yeah, it's quite logical that, that you would bind the bottom left of the texture to the bottom left of our square. So, this one will be 0, 0. This one will be one zero this one will be zero one this one will be one one now if we change this at these coordinates so the uh, the open agl ones this will uh, the texture coordinates will uh, still stay the same and like uh, in our example the distance between uh, this point and this point is the same but, um, well, it's the same as with the distance with, uh, between this point and this point. Well, in, um, in open AGL, well, essentially, this distance could, could have been like a twice this distance, and the texture coordinates would still be 0, 0, and 1, 0. Yeah, you'll see what I mean. So, uh, let's close this and go to our code. Don't we'll see. So here we have our data structure, where we store our position coordinates. Now, let's add a new, a new uh, yeah, variable, and then and this will be a GLK vector two, because we need two coordinates, two coordinates for our uh, position, for our texture position. Name this texture coordinates yeah we need two values for a point so then uh, in your vertices array I'll actually type this out myself so I'll stop recording for a second here I have typed out all of the coordinates so if you notice every time we have um, well a square size value in our in our vertices we have 
uh, one in our texture corner. And so, well, this is the the bottom right corner, and this is our bottom right texture corner. And so, yeah, you can see it like it like follows the corners of the square. Now, um, make sure you get the braces right and the and the commas. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, now we need a texture. So I have this this nice bunny texture. Uh, so just add this this to Xcode to your project and make sure this is selected. Finish. Okay. Now um, to load a texture, we will use uh, the gel kit loader to the class. Uh, the gel kit texture loader class. So, to load the texture. Uh, so, in your view the load method, write uh, cg image ref and create a new variable. It's n it's not an it's not a yeah, it's not an object. It's just a, it, it just a structure, I guess. Image reference. And then, so again with those brackets, now uh, again we'll use a class method of UI image, UI image, sorry, image, image named, and then use the name of our image, and it's called form rabbit. Dot PNG. Is it, yeah, is it right? Yes. It, yeah, it looks right. Okay. And also uh, add like a CG image. So basically, we want to load an image and we want the, the CG image version of it. So we want this to return us a, a CG image, image structure, I guess. Okay, then now I have to. Pass this this texture to open OpenGL. So to do that, we there is the GL Git loader class. So well, we first so we first have to create a new object called GL Git texture info info. I name this texture info texture info. And this equals gel get texture info. So again, we'll use a, a uh, sorry gel get texture loader. And again, this will be a class method. And name this texture with CJ image. Uh, so the first argument is our image. So the image reference we just created. So image reference. Then options. Uh, at the moment, we don't want any options. Well, we will we, we'll add one later, but for now we won't have any. So just type no. And error for for error checking, we don't need that. So just type no. Okay. And you can actually like format this in Xcode. So if we do like, sorry, if you, damn it, you can like do this, like enter. And it will um, like stack them. It looks nice this way. Okay, then uh, one last thing we actually have to use this texture now. So, well, basically, we have to render it. So, to do that, we have to call our base effect. So, self dot base effect dot texture 2D dot name. And this will equal the texture info dot name. Then again, sub dot base effect dot texture two D zero dot target, and this will equals texture info dot target. So the name it's like the is the reference of the image in OpenGL target is basically the kind of texture is being used so there are like 1d textures and 2d textures um, and basically it tells OpenGL the configuration of the buffer 
we are using for a texture, but that's not important. So these are so this pivotal open gel we want to use our our, uh, our texture. Now we have to actually enable our texture. So so open gel will draw it. So to do that, it's quite similar to how we enable uh, our vertices. So just type gel enable enable vertex add array and this will be glk vertex attrib text coordinate zero so notice since this uh, uh, this is a texture to 2d zero and this is also zero there are, you can have like multiple textures at the same time basically so now we have to explain open pengl what kind of texture yeah well how it should perceive the data in the buffer. Um, to do that, call the function uh, gl vertex attrib pointer. So again, it's the same like the vertices. Uh, the size, so we have two components, so uh, pair, pair value. Then the kind is enter gl floats. Gf load normalization no there are floats already then the stride so type size of uh, size of and our vertex data now the the offset um, so essentially the offset is like the the difference in the difference so essentially how am I so how much bytes open GL should skip between in the buffer? So, well, we have this uh, our our data structure, and we also have like the the vertices data. But for our texture, we only want to use uh, our our texture coordinate. So we have to tell open. GL this so basically what you do is create you create a gl void gl void void pointer and this will point to a offset of vertex data and our texture texture core then it's okay so uh, also um, in our uh, our um, vertices, we also have to explain open uh, PNGL now. It should skip some data that we are also so uh, just it just copy and paste the the offset macro and change the texture in accordance to the vertex. And, yeah, just a second. And, no, it's position coordinates. So, yeah. so position coordinates. Position coordinates. Yeah. Okay. So if we run this now, it works, but our rabbit is kind of misformed and it's upside down. So to fix this, well, let's first fix the fact that it's upside down. So uh, essentially, the problem is that in um, the uh, in the iPhone, well, the iOS system. So in the iOS image system, I don't know. Um, the origin is in the top left corner, but in Open uh, in Pagel, the origin is in the bottom left corner. So to fix this, we can use uh, these options. So so here we have like uh, an options argument. We'll give open gel some options um, and this should be in the form uh, of a dictionary and a dictionary is it's like an array but every value has like a key so, yeah it's strange so just type and it's dictionary a dictionary with object and now we have to give a boolean value but 
this has to be an object so, so we, we will like wrap that boolean in a object so we can do it with ns number ns number uh, and this will be number with boolean and we want yes and for the key glk texture loader power gen bottom left so here we tell open gel we want our origin to be in the bottom left corner and voila our image is now correctly placed but it's like red and we don't want that uh, so this is because our image it has it has transparency in it but we didn't, didn't enable that so to enable transparency we should call something called um, so we should first enable the transparency, so we can do that, that, that by typing gl enable gl underscore blend and this will like enable the transparency for us and then you also, also want to call the gl blend func and here we will explain how the transparency works now uh, type here gl source alpha and here you type gl one minus source alpha. Now what this means, well this is like the most common version of this function, it's really hard to explain. Basically it like tells yeah this like your starting value and just like the what you do with it, yeah, it's strange. Well, just know this works. Uh, yeah, it's really difficult to explain actually. Well, yeah, just so this will basically explain how how OpenGL should handle that thing. So if you run this now, so run our image is now transparent, but our rabbit is red, and it shouldn't be red. So to fix that, there's one last thing we can do, and the reason it was red was actually not what I thought first. Uh, it's because here we say we want our cube to have uh, our sorry our rectangle to have a, a red color with this line here. So if we just remove this, our image. Uh, should be normal, yeah. I thought it was something else that caused it, it, uh, it to be right, but okay. So that was uh, it uh, for today. And uh, next video, we will actually uh, make a new class for our texture. So, see you then. Bye.